In 1956, Dr. James Jude was a cardiac surgery resident at Johns Hopkins, deep into his research of hypothermia, a field of study he'd started at the University of Minnesota. But fate led him east. That and the fact his lovely bride was from Baltimore. Little did he know his work in hypothermia would change the way the world responds to emergencies. I was working on hypothermia, whether you should warm them fast or slow, and I was working on rats. Then when I went to Johns Hopkins for my internship and my training program, I continued with this. And I got to know Guy Knickerbocker, who was a young man in training, uh, working on his PhD with Dr. Cowenhoven in his laboratory. William Cowenhoven was an acclaimed electrical engineer at Hopkins. With the help of his graduate student, Guy Knickerbocker, they were developing an external defibrillator. And Guy Knickerbocker used to come to my laboratory, from his laboratory, and defibrillate the animals so we can continue our studies. And one of these times he told me that he had noticed that when he put the paddles on the dog's chest, that the blood pressure went up. I saw the value of this. Dr. Jude made the connection no one else had, that it was the pressure of the paddles that was making the difference. Even when no electricity was applied, it was determined forceful rhythmic pressure on the chest could cause enough blood to move through the body to sustain the vital organs. I found that we could extend this to 60 minutes and still get a survival by using external cardiac massage on the dog. That is squeezing the heart between the breastplate and the vertebral column. Prior to this discovery, the options for prolonging life outside of a hospital setting were practically non-existent. If somebody died then, I had opened the chest, go in there and massage them. And in 1960, CPR, as you know it and I know, started. He came up with the concept of external, he wanted an external defibrillator so that we could defibrillate, which he did. When Guy Knickerbocker told him that he did this to the dog and he saw a pulse, that's all Guy, that Guy Knickerbocker knew, that he saw a pulse. And Dr. Jude said, why did he see the pulse? In 1960, the results were published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. They wrote, anyone anywhere can now initiate cardiac resuscitative procedures. All that is needed is two hands. There was another revelation Dr. Jude had while at Johns Hopkins, a love for teaching, and this would bring him to the University of Miami. Jim Jude was chief of thoracic surgery here, and uh, he taught many people here. A great surgeon and a great physician. I enjoyed teaching, and I taught from 64, which is the year I came down here, till 1971, when I went out in private practice. Then I retired in the year 2000. I was at Mercy Hospital from 1971 until 2000. But during those three decades in Miami, Dr. Jude saved countless lives and taught thousands of others how to do so as well. So we taught the, def the fire department also and they, in turn, they developed the, the rescue squads, which at that time were a, the, a small part of the fire department, became the major part of the fire department. Dr. Rosenblatt developed this technique here, here in the city of Miami. As a surgeon, Dr. Jude also left a legendary mark, saving lives and pioneering programs at various Miami hospitals, and in fact, around the world. As I've established a heart program at, the, at Mercy Hospital, Cedars of Lebanon Hospital, St. Francis Hospital. I've operated on a lot of people. For example, I've operated on all of the archbishops at Mercy Hospital, except for the current archbishop. I, I met Dr. Youth here at, at Mercy Hospital many, many years ago, and I, then I had the privilege to be his associate for 14 years. The division of uh, cardiac surgery in, at Mercy Hospital was a, 
structured by him. And actually, he was one of the initiators of the ICUs. We didn't have any ICUs in the hospital before his pioneer work. He traveled all over the world, uh, spreading the news of uh, the need for intensive care units. Dr. Jude, technically one of the best surgeons I've ever known, he was a surgeon surgeon. And, uh, but, but more than that, uh, his personality, he was a very humble man. He's a very humble man. He may be humble, but he's the father of CPR, and he started CPR as the world knows it today. It's CPR. You know, the fact that we now have a technique whereby a lot of people can be saved. We've been able to help people. AXA Advisors, 2011, Healthcare Heroes Lifetime Achievement Honoree. Dr. James Jude.